Welcome to Intuition's movie, a multitude of tips in free riding, freestyle, wave sailing, racing, or hydrofoiling, how to wave ride, how to use your foot straps on a foil board, how to improve your jumping, how to get in your foot straps, how to accelerate faster, how to sail faster in more control, what size they should be, how to stop spray, if you're freestyle, your wave riding, what to do if you have small feet or big feet. If you watch it all the way to the end, then there's going to be a crib sheet that you can print out to take to the beach so that you can ensure that you learn from this movie. If you like, please share it with your windsurfing community of friends so I can bring you coaching live to your living room. Please subscribe. Guy Crib. <laughs>Welcome to the foot strapping movie on everything you need to know about foot strapping. Many, many, many options. Okay, you can have a narrower stance to make you taller. You can have a wider stance to get lower for control. You can do that by moving your foot straps further apart or closer together. You can move your foot straps further forwards on the board or further back. Your foot straps can be tighter. They can be taller. You've got the inboard position, middle position, or the outboard position. All these factors will make for a more controlled, faster, smoother windsurfing experience. The professionals spend a lot of time getting their foot straps adjusted. I think I should adjust my foot straps every few sessions. They always seem to need adjusting. For example, when it's choppier, you have slightly larger foot straps, and when it's flatter water, you can have slightly tighter foot straps. <laughs> The central position or inboard foot straps positions your body directly above the board. The middle position helps you lean out a little bit, but the outboard position, they help you lean right out so that when you're windsurfing, you can be as low as possible and as far away from your board as possible. The more outboard you are windsurfing, the more counterweight you have against the power of the rig. Modern free ride boards, all these different foot strap options, I've set it up so that I can get my heels right over the rail and I can sail it really outboard. I'm as low as possible, I'm as far away from the board as possible because as my harness hook is the primary connection to the boom, as I push my harness hook outboard, it's gonna pull the sail in line with the center line that's my optimum fastest position. Being as far outboard as possible, I've got more power in my sail. By being low down, I'm creating a huge counterweight to the rig, and therefore I can keep in control when I get hit by gusts. So the outboard foot straps are the optimum position for free ride sailing or racing, where you want the biggest sail and the most power. When you're sailing in choppy conditions, and your board is bouncing up and down. If you are sailing with inboard foot straps, then your body is above the board and you're gonna feel every bit of chop. Your knees will start acting like suspension and they'll be bouncing and absorbing each piece of chop. And each time your knees flex, your sail goes in and out and in and out and in and out and in and out. It sheets out and every time the sail fluctuates in its position, you're changing the mass foot pressure. So the board starts bouncing up and down like this and you're going bang, 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 bang. If it's very choppy water, move your foot straps out. And what this will do will allow your legs to approach the board more from the side. Then you have what I'd liken to rod suspension, where the board is free to go up and down without bouncing you up and down. This makes an enormous difference to your control. Also, by moving your foot straps further outboard, remember that automatically sheets the sail in. So your sail is more closed and more powerful which means you can use smaller sails. Feel free to email me anytime about InVip, Intuition, VIP, Video Important Person, that's you. Send me a movie of you windsurfing and I can analyze it and improve your windsurfing. Thank you. For free riders, as you improve your foot strapping, you should try and move the foot straps further and further out to the rail. Your ultimate goal is to put them right out on the rail. If you guys watching this video are already in your foot straps comfortably, and you are primarily free ride sailing or slalom sailing where you are blasting back and forth and back and forth, back and forth and back and forth, back and forth and back and forth across the wind and not really doing much else, then your foot straps need to be right outboard. Otherwise, you're sailing in a very compromised position. You will never get the most out of your windsurfing equipment if you use these middle positions. They are purely a transitionary stage from beginner's position through improver's position 
to competent windsurfing position. This is where you drive the board from with your heel over the rail outboard to enable you to do that sort of 90 degree windsurfing. But as you're progressing and as you're improving your windsurfing, then these foot straps are good. <laughs> If any of you have been blasting and you find spray is coming off the rail of the board here or spray is hitting your leg here or even hitting you in the face, it's probably because you're sailing your board on its edge like that. Now, there is a time and a place to sail your board like this. For example, if you're going upwind on a waveboard, you would purposefully sail your board like this. Or if the water was particularly choppy and you wanted to smooth out the chop, you could sail it slightly on its windward edge and the board would go <laughs> straight through the chop instead of going bang, 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 bang. But if you're finding that you get the spray coming off, hitting your leg, or if you find your board is wandering in these crazy directions, you never seem to be in total control, it's probably because your board is slightly over on its windward side. That may be because you've got your middle position instead of the outboard position. When you've got the middle position and you try and extend your legs and lean out, see the board comes with me. Because your ankle doesn't bend any more than that, the board is also leaning over. Whereas if you use your outboard foot strap, see how my heel is now over the rail, I can straighten my leg and my foot could still be in the foot strap. So outboard foot straps will give you way more control and will hopefully prevent that spray from hitting you. Now, that's a little bit counterintuitive because people often think that, oh, if my feet are further to the rail, I'm tipping it over. But in fact, it's more about the agility in your ankle. If you do that and you still find the board is weaving around like this, there's two things to check. One, when your board is flat laterally like this instead of on a rail, then it's freer to accelerate faster and reach improved top speeds. Your back toes are the closest part of your body to the center line of your board. So it's their responsibility to try and trim the board flat by pressing down on your back toes. This will improve your acceleration and your top speeds. Do you have the right size fin? If your board is falling onto its windward side, it may be that your fin is not generating enough lift. So you can use a bigger fin, to keep it more level. Check out my YouTube video on fins. By the time you watch this, there may be a multitude of other windsurfing intuition movies on Online. But right now, I'm just going to quickly show you a couple of excerpts from the Fins movie. Go check it out. Fin size, sail size, multiplied by five, and then add four. What is five times five? Five. Plus four? Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine centimeter fin. As a beginner to foot straps, you should have them as inboard as possible and as far forwards as possible. And a central single back strap. So I'm putting these foot straps to the outboard position now to best position my heel over the rail and give me my strongest attacking position to sail the very, very fastest. That's why all the slalom boards in the world have their foot straps the most outboard because when you're sailing a slalom board, they know you want to approach the board from the side with as straight as legs as possible to push your ass out this way as far as possible. So the foot straps are positioned right over the rail. <laughs> This board is a hydrofoil board. It has the narrowest stance of all. It's about 33 centimeters. This is the world's oldest slalom board, but it still has slalom foot straps on it. About 41. Absolute classic magic ride free ride board from JP. 37. Now we're on to some more advanced free ride board. The Super Ride 38. So very similar to the magic ride. This is a dedicated freestyle board. You want to have a slightly narrower stance so you get lots of pop. And the freestyle board is about 38. Now, when you go surfing on a wave board, you're going to want the widest stance of all because a wider stance gets you lower, gives you more control so you can really surf it. A wave board can be as much as 44, 45. Gone from the hydrofoil board with the narrowest spread up to this wave board with the widest spread. I'm just measuring from the front to the back strap all the way to approximately the middle of the front strap. When you use bigger sails, it's because the wind is lighter. When the wind is lighter, the water is normally flatter. And in flatter water, you can have a narrower stance. So the approximate guideline is the bigger the boards, the narrower your stance. Now the biggest boards of all are foil boards. And foil boards have the narrowest stance of all. There is zero chop. When you're foiling, there is zero chop. Everything is super smooth. Okay, all hell is breaking loose in your head and your actions have to be off the scale. But 
there is no chop to deal with. This is where we have the narrower stance. You're also trying to make yourself very tall, especially going upward. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, whether it's windsurfing, surfing, kiting, wind winging, the front wing is the wing that you're balancing on. It doesn't matter how long the fuselage is, where the mast is, any of that stuff, always the front wing is the thing you're actually riding. Beginners and intermediate free ride foils should be positioned directly in between both foot straps. This is because when you're riding a beginner's foil or a free ride foil instead of a race foil, then you don't really sheet the sail in and you stand directly above the front wing and you're just riding that at slow speeds. If the cord is particularly wide, and if you don't know what cord means, please go to my other YouTube video on fins. Try and line the foot straps up so that you're equidistant around about a third of the way back down the cord because that's really where the lift is coming from. Whereas race foils can be slightly further forwards because you're truly windsurfing them, applying loads of mast foot pressure to hold the board down, counteracting the enormous lift that these fast race foils are producing especially on an upwind, downwind course. If you find that your board is not coming out the water when you're hydrofoiling, yet you're planing, possibly because the foot straps are too far forwards and therefore your body weight is too far forwards, preventing the nose from coming up. When you go hydrofoil windsurfing, you must be in both foot straps or at least the front foot strap before you get the board out the water. Once it's up, if you're not in the foot straps, you are gonna fall off so fast. Plus, the chances of it coming up, if you're stood here, the board simply isn't going to come out the water. You've got too much weight holding it down. So you need to be back here to get it up. And then normally to get it up, what you do is you push down on your back toes and that pushes the tail down, which levers the nose up. I thought I was just going to be talking about foot strap size. Non-stop in the office. Office for me is normally the beach, but non-stop indoors. Behind a computer screen. I'm kind of getting used to it now. I finally produced this movie on foot strapping. Thank you for watching it. Sailors have a mid-range stance, partly to improve control, but they also need acceleration. Free ride windsurfing or slalom sailing. If you find that the board is sticking to the surface a lot, and if you're not going as fast as you want to be, you can bring the foot straps further back. That will encourage the board to sail a bit more on the tail or a bit more on the fin so that there is less board in the water and therefore less friction. If you look at the speed sailors and the slalom sailors especially, their boards are sort of rattling around here and you're actually just windsurfing on the fin and the board hardly ever touches down. So to achieve that, you normally bring the foot straps further back and that will cause the nose to come up more. On the other hand, if you're having difficulty getting planing or you find at speed that the nose lifts too much, you can move the foot straps further forwards to help keep the board more down in the water. I'll reiterate, if you're on a smaller free right board, the chances are you're gonna have a wider foot strap to improve your control, and a bigger free ride board, your foot straps can come closer together to get you more outboard and make you taller to handle the higher booms that come with bigger rigs. On a waveboard, you have a wider stance, really wide apart, because that automatically gets you a bit lower, like I'm surfing. It will get more weight over your front foot, engaging the rail better, which is critical for good control, so you can unleash hell in your wave rides. So a wide stance is generally used in foot strapping for improved control, partly by virtue of it making you lower down. If the conditions are predominantly wave riding, you should have a wider stance. If the conditions are more about jumping, then bring the front straps further back, and this will help your airtime. Hey, it's also no problem to offset your foot straps. On my jumping side, I'd like to have my front foot strap a little bit further back than on the wave riding side. <laughs> So freestyle boards, we have a narrower stance than we would on a wave board. The closer your feet are together, I mean, not right together, but certainly when they're quite narrow, it's easier for you to <laughs> jump. And by having narrower stance on a freestyle board, it's easier to do a pop. Whereas on a wave board, you're using a ramp to take off. Positioning your heels over the rail, I can see all my toes just. Now, if the water is flatter, I can get a little bit lower and get my heels closer to the rail and these straps could be even tighter. So this foil board, you can see that the front foot strap is pretty close to the rail. The back strap has some distance here. Now that's because when you're foiling, 
You're actually standing above the board, so you need the foot strap pretty inboard. On advanced racing foils, you do lean out, but you take the board with you when you lean out, so the whole board is leaning over. Wind falling, your foot straps are usually quite large to help you stay above the board, certainly if you're on an intermediate style free ridey foil or a beginner foil. If you're on a racing foil, they can get a bit tighter. Trouble is, foil boards are so wide that when it comes to jibing, moving your feet, this front foot can get jammed as you twist it around in the foot strap. So you need them quite loose, so you can just unstick your front foot just before you jibe. And then, anyway, much more on foil jibing and wind foiling technique in other videos. Right now, everything is shut down. I can't take you on holidays, exotic location. We're gonna do a load in England, come and join me here. But in the meantime, I'm gonna be producing online video content for you to improve. <laughs> This is wave forward foot strap setup. Now, wave forward foot straps are the biggest foot straps of all. You need to be able to wedge your front foot right in deep to that foot strap. Let's say I'm going into my bottom turn by having such a big foot strap as I lean into my bottom turn, the board banks over onto the rail. If my foot strap was tighter, so my foot was only in that far, then as I go into the bottom turn, my heel would lift off the board and the board wouldn't actually bank into the turn. The reason why our front foot straps are so big for wave riding is so that we get this three point connection, sort of one point, two points with the heel and then upwards into the strap, a three point connection. It feels like I'm wearing snowboard bindings. This board is coming with me when I lean into my bottom turn. And the back foot would have the same responsibility. It needs to be right into my toes or over the rail. And I can really drive into the turn and bring the board over with me. On the side you're going out on, your jumping side, you need big foot straps, partly to help get your weight forwards over your front toes, very central in the board, both in terms of its length and its width. By being central over your front toes, you can accelerate best. Your back foot strap also needs to be very big to improve your jumping. This is how you jump. Watch these toes. These are really important that they push down when you jump. So you angle the board like this. When you're flying through the air, you have to be trimming the board with the windward rail lifting. You can do that by picking the board up with your toes there. Your back toes push down to pull the board up. That's how you jump. If you start jumping, lifting your toes, you're in all sorts of trouble. You can get catapulted, lose control. The board could really wipe out in midair, you have big crashes. If your back strap's too tight, then when you jump, your heel is likely to lift off the board and you can lose control in the air, which is really dangerous. <laughs> Moonwalk, one of intuition's core skills, is the action of pulling the back foot underneath you through the back toes and you do it every time you jump, especially with forward rotating jumps like forward loops, vulcans, spocks, tabletop, anything where the nose goes downwind is known as a forward rotating jump and you need your toe pressure to initiate that. One of the advantages of such big foot straps on wave or freestyle boards is that it puts us right over the center of the board even if we're not planing we can stay hooked in for ages. One of the reasons why we use such long harness lines, which will be in another movie, is to allow you to stay hooked in when you're not planing. When you have huge foot straps, like we do on wave boards and freestyle boards, there is a drawback in this position over the center line of the board. It's really difficult to sail across the wind. It's fine to sail on a broad reach downwind because you're being pulled forwards over the board and you're very much above it. It's really good for sailing downwind. Sailing upwind on a wave board or a freestyle board, these big foot straps are fine because your heel comes out towards the rail, your toes lever into the foot strap and you can sail the board on its rail to get you upwind, which is how we do it on wave boards and freestyle boards, just like kite surfing, you edge the board using the front foot and the back foot to lever the board over onto the rail. So these huge foot straps are fantastic for sailing on a broad reach downwind and they're fantastic for sailing upwind. They're not comfortable sailing across the wind, but permanently when you're wave sailing, you're always trying to gain more ground upwind because when you wave ride, if you're doing front side wave riding, you lose so much ground downwind that wherever possible, you're trying to go upwind. These foot straps are great for jumping, they're great for accelerating, they're great for going upwind, they're just impossible across the wind. Same with freestyle sailing. When you're freestyle sailing, your objective will be to get upwind because of all those tricks, you're kind of spinning downwind. So freestyle boards generally are either sailing upwind or downwind. And again, those big foot straps allow it. Now there's more about that in my other intuition tuning movie on fins. 
if you have a fin sub 32 like the multi-fin waveboards they don't provide anywhere near enough power to get you up with nor do freestyle fins which are minuscule now there's a lot more to it than that <laughs> If you have a multitude of footstrap options, promise me this. If you're going to be actually wave sailing or predominantly jumping or bump and jump and freestyle tricks, move the footstraps inboard to the central position and make them the correct size. Nice and big. If, however, you're just predominantly blasting, you're just blasting back and forth and jibing, it's a windy day, it's your small board, then please move your footstraps to the outside position. With them in the outside position, don't forget they've got to be tighter to accommodate your heels over the rail. You'll get such improved performance. Thank you. In choppy water, if you're wave sailing or freestyle sailing, and therefore you have to use inboard foot straps, then almost always the direction that you leave the beach from when you're sailing out from the beach, that's the choppiest condition. So you'll find you're bouncing around a lot on the way out. Why don't you try sailing the board more on the rail? And that way you'll slice through the chop going <laughs> through the chop instead of going bang, 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 bang. And then coming back in, you're going to naturally be overtaking the backs of the waves. It's a much smoother ride. So a good tactical decision to make. If you're forced to sail with inboard foot straps because you're wave sailing or freestyle sailing, then going out, bank the board over and coming in, sail it flatter and faster. And of course, if you have any questions about how to sail upwind or if you have any video you want analyzed of you windsurfing upwind, please send it to me, guy at guycrib.com, and we can begin our InVip, Intuition VIP, Video Important Person. And I will analyze your movie and tell you how to improve. Freestyle size foot straps are basically the same as wave sailing foot straps. The slight difference is that freestylers are very keen on getting their foot straps very tall, but very narrow in this dimension. That's partly because they need the pressure against either side of their foot to ensure that their feet don't come out. So this foot strap is very narrow in this dimension, but it's very tall in this dimension. What that allows me to do, gets my foot right over the board so I can pick the board up with my toes to go into Vulcans and Spocks and all the freestyle tricks. But it also allows me, when I land a Spock or a Vulcan and I'm sliding backwards, I need my foot to be able to roll slightly onto its side. The height of the foot strap enables me to do that to ensure that you're balanced over the central part of the board and not catching the tail sliding in reverse. When you land a lot of your freestyle tricks, you need to keep a lot of pressure on your front toes when you're sliding in reverse. <laughs> Before getting into the front strap, touch the back strap with this corner of your foot. This identifies where it is so that you can get in much smoother. By touching the back strap first, it gives you a wider stance so that when you go into the front strap, you've got more stability and it's quicker to then get into the back foot strap. If you don't touch the back strap, then when you put your front foot in the front strap, your feet are so close together, how do you find the back strap? You could be all over the place. Plus, you're vulnerable to a catapult. Get the back foot straight into the foot strap the moment you've got your front foot in. As you accelerate, all the weight moves onto your back foot and it becomes very difficult to move it. At that point, you can pivot on the heel, tuck your toes in. When you're wobbling around waiting for a wave, as soon as you know you're actually gonna catch that wave in float and ride conditions, touch the back strap, and that way, as you drop down the face, it's much quicker to get into both foot straps. Going through this in a little bit more detail, without the benefit of being able to actually show you this in person on the beach, then I'll just talk you through the basics of it now. Getting into the foot straps. Hook in first, look down, front foot in. Step on your front toes and immediately move your back foot in. Try not to stomp around onto your heel side because the heel will turn the board upwind. And when the board turns upwind, your sail opens, which means your weight leaves the mast foot and it goes onto your feet, which means the back of the board sinks. Glug, 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 glug. And when the back of the board sinks, its default setting is to swerve upwind. As the nose turns upwind, the sail opens more. And as the sail opens more, there is less weight on the mast foot and there is more weight on your feet. Therefore, you're perpetuating this sort of vicious cycle. As soon as the tail starts sinking, board swerves upwind, it's kind of game over. You can prevent it, pull the sail in, give it some power. That creates mast foot pressure that pushes the nose off the wind 
and gets you going again. So it's very important as you're learning to use the foot straps that you keep power in the sail. So hook in, drop down nice and low, look down, front foot in the foot strap, press down on your front toes so that you can move your back foot straight into the foot strap, press down on the back toes. Rum, 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 rum. Be really careful when you're going into the foot straps not to lean the sail back with you. That will just turn the board straight upwind. Be careful not to stand on your heels. That will turn the board upwind. Be careful to keep power in the sail. You can actually go like this. Front strap revs back strap because those revs, rum, 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 those revs will whoa, pull you onto your front foot so that you can move your back foot into the strap. If you're sailing really far downwind, trying to get into the foot straps downwind, the sail is more open and it makes it harder to move your back foot into the strap. Should you go into the foot straps or the harness first? Well, if everything's cool, you should go into the harness first because by hooking in, your weight naturally goes onto the mast foot, which makes your feet much lighter to move around. So the guideline is hook in first, then foot straps. However, if it's a really tricky situation, for example, if it's your first ever time using foot straps, that's really tricky. Or if there's a mast high wall of white water coming towards you that you've got to try and get over. Or if you're trying to do a planing carve jibe and you're having to pump the sail on the exit to get a planing exit, those are tricky situations. So in those tricky situations, it's foot straps first, then hook in. But if everything's cool, you sink into your harness, front strap, back strap, rim, 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 rim. <laughs> When you're accelerating windsurfing, you should tip the rig as far forwards as possible, right to the verge of a catapult. In this position, your sail is most powerful. Your back foot should act like an anchor point to prevent catapulting here. So getting it in the foot strap early is really, really useful. And by lifting the back heel as high as you can, it makes you a bit longer in your back leg, which allows you to get further forwards. It also anchors you to the board by applying pressure to the back toes and up into the foot strap. Okay, you know what they say about big feet? Big foot straps. Also, it's not just big in terms of how deep they are, but how narrow they are, how pinched together they are. I've got size 48 feet. In US, that's about a 13 or 14, and in UK, that's a 12 and a half or 13. So that's huge feet, and they're particularly wide. When I buy a standard production board, the foot straps happen to fit my feet perfectly. And the chances are you have a smaller foot than mine, so you ought to try and move your foot straps a bit narrower like this. Now, a lot of the brands provide you with an offset washer. And if I spin the washer 180 degrees, then this thicker bit here will be on the inside, pinching the foot straps together. Go and check your board and see if you can do the same with yours. And if you've got feet that are under a size UK 12 European 45 or a US 13, you need to be pinching your foot straps together. Wriggle these two sections apart. Viva that off. Oh. Spin it around 180 degrees. Now when I screw this foot strap back on the board, it's gonna be much more snug. Another thing you can do, and you can use alternate holes. You see I've got the outside screw at the back and this screw one from the back. That will pinch the foot strap a little bit tighter. You can do the same with the back foot strap holes. I use those two screws. If you're thinking about wearing wetsuit boots when you go windsurfing, you need a damn good excuse. It's like you're gonna die of hypothermia or you're freestyle sailing. A lot of freestyle sailors wear wetsuit boots because they know that their boot is gonna get stuck in the foot strap. And in all their flat water spinning tricks, they wanna make sure they don't lose their board halfway around the turn. Whereas wave sailors, damn, they know they need to be able to bail out quick and eject the board. But with wetsuit boots, your foot gets stuck you're in all sorts of trouble. If you're wearing a wetsuit boot, it's harder to feel where the back strap is and it's harder to get in. And then your heel's probably gonna drag in the water as well. Don't do it, sail naked. I thoroughly recommend barefoot. <laughs> Beginner size foot straps. If you're on a board over about 130 liters, you can sail in these inboard forward foot strap positions, even when you're not planing. This will develop your confidence to start using the foot straps when it gets a bit windier or when you're going a bit faster. <laughs> Improvers, remember you only use this position as a transitionary stage until you're capable of using the foot straps in the most outboard position. Really nice snug fit so I can see all my toes. That's great. <laughs> and this is how you adjust the foot strap. Most foot straps are the same. 
this one even comes with some measurements. So that once you've adjusted one of your foot straps, you can adjust all of them pretty quickly and accurately. So I'm going to make this tighter. Put it on neatly, open towards the back of the board so that the water flow would never open them. I'm going to suggest that everyone has one of these. This is solely for windsurfing. These things are supplied with a lot of the brand's foot straps. That inserts into one hole and the pointy bits are pointing up. Make sure your foot strap screws are done up perfectly tight, otherwise the foot strap will twist like this. And that's a disaster. That really messes up the feel and the connection you have with the board. Make sure the washer isn't twisted. Wave boards and freestyle boards, you're right above the board. When you're a beginner learning foot straps, you're above the board, but you should aim to progressively get further out for free ride sailing or racing. Beginner size foot straps, improvers, free ride blasting, super flat water free riding, slalom, wave sailing, freestyle sailing, hydrofoiling, hydrofoil racing. Don't make this mistake. If you use a central back strap and an outboard front strap, your sail will be open like this. You need your back foot close to the rail to close the sail so that you can accelerate and reach proper speeds. So a single back strap and an outboard front strap is a disaster for early planning. Well, this is even worse. This, this is really messed up. <laughs> if you try windsurfing like this with this huge sloppy foot strap, forget it. It'd be like trying to do a sprint in flip flops. That needs to be way tighter than that. <laughs> Mem, 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 mem.